Transformers fundamentally changed AI, and understanding why is crucial to grasping one of the most significant breakthroughs in deep learning history. It is the fundamental building block for all the modern AI system. By now, all of us have used ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, and other LMs. They are all based on transformer architecture. The 2017 paper, Attention is All You Need, completely rewrote how machines process language. I want to walk you through this architecture, explain the intuition behind its components, and discuss both what problems it solved and what challenges remain. Before diving into specifics, let's understand the high-level architecture. The transformer consists of two main components, an encoder and a decoder. The encoder processes the input sequence, while the decoder generates the output sequence. What makes this architecture revolutionary is that it completely eliminates recurrence and convolution, which were previously considered essential for sequence modeling. The encoder consists of six identical layers stacked on top of each other. Each layer has two sublayers, a multi-head self-attention mechanism, and a position-wise fully connected feed-forward network. The decoder also has six identical layers, but each layer contains three sublayers: a masked multi-head self-attention mechanism, a multi-head attention over the encoder's output, and a position-wise feed-forward network. A crucial architectural feature is the residual connection around each sublayer, followed by layer normalization. This allows gradients to flow more easily through the network during training. The output dimension throughout the model remains constant at 512, simplifying the overall design. Embeddings and positional encoding, giving words meaning and order. The input to the transformer begins with word embeddings. Each word is converted into a 512 dimensional vector using learned embeddings. These embeddings capture semantic relationships between words placing similar words closer together in the vector space. But there's a fundamental challenge here. Unlike RNNs, the transformer processes all words simultaneously, so it has no inherent understanding of word order. This is where positional encodings come in. The authors use sine and cosine functions of different frequencies to encode position. This might seem complex, but the intuition is elegant. Each position is encoded as a unique pattern across the 512 dimensions. Positions that are close together have similar patterns, while distant positions are more distinct. The sine and cosine functions were chosen because they allow the model to easily attend to relative positions. The relationship between position 5 and position 8 is the same as between position 105 and position 108. These positional encodings are simply added to the word embeddings before feeding them into the encoder and decoder stacks. This combined representation carries both semantic meaning and positional information. Self-attention, the core innovation. The heart of the transformer is its self-attention mechanism. While attention had been used before, the paper's implementation as the primary mechanism for processing sequences was revolutionary. Here's how self-attention works. For each word, we create three vectors, query, key, and value, by multiplying the embedding with three different learned weight matrices. To determine how much focus to put on each word when encoding a specific word, we compute the dot product between the query vector of our target word and the key vectors of all words in the sequence. These scores are scaled by dividing by the square root of the dimension of the key vectors, this scaling prevents the dot products from growing too large, which would push the softmax function into regions with extremely small gradients. The scaled scores go through a softmax function to normalize them between 0 and 1, creating attention weights. These weights are then used to create a weighted sum of the value vectors, producing the output of the attention layer for our target word. The beauty of this mechanism is that it allows each word to directly consider every other word in the sequence. This direct connection enables the model to capture long-range dependencies much more effectively than RNNs, which have to pass information sequentially through many time steps. Rather than performing a single attention function, the authors found it beneficial to linearly project the queries, keys, and values into different subspaces and perform attention in parallel. This is multi-head attention. With eight attention heads, each operating in a 64-dimensional space, 
the model can focus on different aspects of the sequence simultaneously. Some heads might focus on local syntactic patterns, while others capture long-range semantic dependencies or even specific linguistic phenomena like coreference resolution. The outputs from all attention heads are concatenated and projected back to the original dimension using another learned weight matrix. This parallel processing allows the model to jointly attend to information from different representation subspaces at different positions. The feed-forward networks, adding depth and complexity. After the attention layer, each position passes through a fully connected feed-forward network. This is applied to each position independently and identically, consisting of two linear transformations with a real U activation in between. The inner dimension of this network is 2048 significantly larger than the model dimension of 512. This wider network allows the model to process the information from the attention layer and introduce non-linearities. You can think of this as giving each position its own small neural network to transform its representation based on the context gathered through attention. The decoder, generating output step by step. The decoder works similarly to the encoder, but has some important differences. The first sublayer in each decoder layer is a masked multi-head self-attention mechanism. The masked part is crucial. During training, the decoder can only attend to positions that come before the current position, as it would be cheating to look at future positions that haven't been generated yet. The second sublayer performs multi-head attention over the encoder's output. This is where the decoder integrates information from the input sequence, processed by the encoder, into its own processing. The query vectors come from the previous decoder sublayer, while the key and value vectors come from the encoder's output. Finally, the decoder has a linear layer followed by a softmax function to convert the final representations into probabilities over the vocabulary, generating one word at a time. Training and optimization. Making it all work, the transformer uses label smoothing during training, which prevents the model from becoming too confident in its predictions. The optimizer is Adam with a custom learning rate schedule that includes a warm-up period. This schedule increases the learning rate linearly for the first 4,000 steps and then decreases it proportionally to the inverse square root of the step number. Dropout is applied to the output of each sublayer, to the sum of embeddings and positional encodings, and to the attention weights. This regularization technique prevents overfitting and encourages robust learning. What problems did transformers solve? First, parallelization. RNNs process tokens sequentially, making them difficult to parallelize. Transformers process all tokens simultaneously, enabling much faster training on modern hardware. Second, long-range dependencies. RNNs struggle with capturing dependencies between distant tokens due to the vanishing gradient problem. Transformers directly model relationships between any two positions, regardless of their distance. Third, computational efficiency. While the asymptotic complexity is higher, the constant factors and parallelization make transformers more efficient in practice for most sequence lengths. Fourth, interpretability. Attention weights provide some level of interpretability, allowing researchers to visualize which parts of the input the model focuses on when making predictions. Fifth, foundation for scalability. The architecture proved highly scalable, leading to increasingly powerful models from BERT to GPT to the modern frontier models we use today. What challenges remain? First, quadratic complexity. The self-attention mechanism has quadratic complexity with respect to sequence length, making very long sequences computationally expensive. This has sparked research into efficient attention mechanisms like sparse transformers, reformer, performer, and others. Second, positional encoding limitations. The original sinusoidal position. Encoding doesn't generalize well to sequence lengths longer than those seen during training. Alternative approaches like relative positional encoding, rotary position embedding, and learned position embeddings aim to address this. Third, context window restrictions. Related to the quadratic complexity issue, most implementations have a fixed maximum sequence length, limiting the context models can utilize. Extending this context window remains an active area of research. 
Fourth, training instability. Transformers can be unstable during training, requiring careful tuning of learning rates, warm-up periods, and initialization schemes. Fifth, memory efficiency. The memory footprint of transformer models grows rapidly with model size and sequence length, necessitating techniques like gradient checkpointing, mixed precision training, and model parallelism. The impact, attention is all you need, didn't just introduce a new architecture, it sparked a paradigm shift. The paper demonstrated that recurrence, previously thought essential for sequence modeling, was unnecessary. This insight led to an explosion of research and applications. BERT revolutionized natural language understanding through bi-directional pre-training. GPT models demonstrated increasingly powerful text generation capabilities. The scaling laws identified by researchers at OpenAI showed that transformer performance improves predictably with model size and data. The architecture has spread beyond NLP to vision, audio, multimodal models, and even protein folding. The transformer architecture has enabled much larger models than were previously practical, ushering in the era of foundation models. These models, pre-trained on vast data sets and fine-tuned for specific tasks, have dramatically raised the bar for what AI can achieve. Transformer architecture continues to evolve and improve as of we speak now. Looking at its impact, it is fun to realize tension indeed was all we needed. I hope this helped you to understand the paper. The paper link and links to some other resources are provided in the description below for reference. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section. Thanks for tuning in.